Once they saw that boy blocking Chris Jones one-on-one -on -one several times in one play, they said, oh, yeah, give him the money. Team, keep it clean. Breaking news. The Baltimore Ravens have signed Justice Hill running back to a contract extension. We're going to talk about that. John Harbaugh is hearing us. I be telling y'all he be listening to the videos. They be watching y'all and reading all of y'all comments. Also, we got a special giveaway coming up. And we got so much more stuff to talk about. So many questions of you guys to answer. Let's get into it right now before we do make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video happy purple friday even though i mean we ain't got no purple on right now but we represent purple every single day let's get it so sources this is from ian Rappaport. says the baltimore ravens and running back justice hill have agreed to terms on a two-year six million dollar contract extension a nice deal for an underrated core player for them in his sixth year wow that went by really, really fast, man. Really fast. But first off, I don't want to hear nobody complaining about this deal. Like, that, there's some deals you can complain about. Justice Hill should not and will not be one. I ain't having it. I'm letting you know I ain't having it. Kind of going, oh, why are we paying money for a backup running back? Somebody said, why are we paying money for a special teamer like that? Look, it's a two-year extension or six mil. So that's three mil per year not much money at all but think about this justice hill is not just a special team you don't just see him out there on kick return you don't just see him out there on a punt return no justice hill is somebody while he may not be a starter justice hill is out there a lot a whole lot justice hill last year was his best year in my opinion last year is where he took the biggest leap forward i remember a couple years ago when the baltimore ravens first Resign Justice Hill. A lot of fans are like, eh. a lot of fans are like, yuck. A lot of fans are like, what are the Baltimore Ravens doing? Why are they wasting money on him? And it wasn't even that much money, but he's proven to be worth it. And this again, this deal, three mil per year, it's nothing. It's nothing for somebody that does a lot. A whole lot. Let's see what Jeff Zrebeck had to say about it. He said, uh, the Ravens have agreed in principle to a two-year contract extension with running back Justice Hill. Uh, the deal has an average per year of $3 million with performance incentives also involved. Hill uh, had been in line to hit free agency following this season. So Baltimore Ravens wanted to get ahead of Justice Hill potentially hitting free agency uh, before he got there. Jeff Zrebeck also said the following. He said, this is the third contract for Hill. And yes, it is uh, the, his rookie deal, obviously. And then when they signed him a couple years ago to a two-year deal, and now they signed him to this third contract, a two-year deal. So this is the third contract for Hill, a fourth round pick in 2019, who is the lone player left from the team's 2019 draft class. Ooh, I didn't know that. I would have to go back and look and throw all them guys and see, well, obviously all of them gone, but to see where they ended up at. Anyway, continuing, he said, Hill has been productive as a reserve running back and on special teams. Very, very true. Uh, he's highly respected. He's a highly respected player in the building. He doesn't complain about his role and plays bigger than his size. Yeah, that's that that's that's spot on that is like the perfect uh explanation for who justice hill is and what justice hill does um he's somebody that we definitely appreciate i, I was talking to uh, my guy jt a little bit ago and he made a really really good point he talked about how with the baltimore ravens and he's been saying this even way before the contract but how the baltimore ravens they could be eyeing a running back uh in early on in the draft next year and i can see that definitely happening because uh, some points he brought out Derrick Henry he has a two-year deal uh, but like we've been saying on here Derrick Henry's deal is really a one-year deal it's technically a two-year deal but all the guarantees all the big money is in the first year of the deal next year I don't think anything at all if if anything is guaranteed it's very very minimal so the Ravens after this year they could cut him and be like boom that's it will they do it though we'll see we'll see how this year goes first Keaton Mitchell who oof man <laughs> wait till tomorrow but Keaton Mitchell um he Question marks about him, about his health. How's he going to be when he gets back? When is he going to get back? There are a lot of question marks on him right now. There's so much that we don't know. Will he be the same Keaton Mitchell when he gets back? I think he will be. But the Baltimore Ravens don't know that for sure, for sure. So there's question marks. So there's that. And then you got Rasheen Ali, who we haven't seen much of him. We saw him in the preseason, but we haven't seen much of him. And what we did see of him, it was a bit shaky. Uh, but, again, he's a rookie, so 
wasn't much, much expectation, so we'll see in the future. But Justice Hill is somebody who you know. You know what they bring to the table. You know what they can do. And I don't even think Justice Hill has reached his full potential. I'm not sure if Justice Hill will ever reach his full potential, though. And I don't say that, and I don't mean that in a bad or negative way. I just mean because of Justice Hill's role. He's not the starter. He's not a starter for the Baltimore Ravens. He could start if needed be, but he's not a starter. He's a role player. He's a backup. He's there in pass protection on passing downs. Uh, they'll run him sometimes too, but the reason I don't think he'll reach, ever reach his full potential is because he's not a starter. But anyway, uh, what my guy was saying is that he expects the, the Baltimore Ravens to draft the running back early just because of that all those questions and with them re-signing Justice Hill, uh, who is a role player, that still leaves the door wide open uh, for them to take a running back. Now, I know a lot of Ravens fans are going to be like, take a running back early. What? We need offensive line. We need receiver. And, and I, I get it all. But we'll, see. We'll, we'll just see how everything plays itself out. And Justice Hill, he commented on his new contract. He said it's a great feeling to sign a third contract with the Ravens. Said it was a surprise. And Justice Hill said, I just come to work every single day. I wasn't paying much attention to the contract. I'm a Raven man. This is where I want to be. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. We taking shots, Justice Hill? Let me know if, if you doing it like that. You taking shots at some other people that left? I don't know, but either way, it's all good. And we glad and should be glad that Justice Hill will remain a Baltimore Raven. I know we all looking for the best deals on tickets so we can go see our Baltimore Ravens play in person or just go to an NFL game in general. But where do we look? Who got the best deals? And where can we find them? Well, we got the answer to that question for you. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek. So if you're looking to go to a football game, you want to go see your favorite NBA team play, you want to go to a concert, literally whatever, SeatGeek got it for you. Now y'all know me, I'm trying to hit up some Ravens games. And that's whether we gotta make the trip to M&T Bank Stadium or something a little closer for when the Ravens come down to Florida. Either way, SeatGeek makes it easy. The way that they do things is just so simple. It makes for a lot smoother process for you. They put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. And each ticket is rated on a scale from one to 10. So look out for those green dots. Green means good, red means bad. And every single ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only ticket site that lets you actually return the tickets before the event using swaps now since i know y'all want to go to these games and festivals events concerts whatever it may be you know i came through for you guys use my code engraven to get twenty dollars off of tickets at SeatGeek. that's twenty dollars off your first purchase with promo code engraven make sure you click the link in the description to download the app and again that's promo code engraven for twenty dollars off your first purchase from SeatGeek. enjoy your event now i'll be trying to tell y'all i know a lot of y'all don't believe me a lot of y'all think i'm foolish for saying this a lot of y'all think i'm just talking 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 which i can't do a lot of but a lot of y'all don't be trying to hear me when I say I know the Baltimore Ravens, they be listening to y'all, they be reading y'all comments, they be in the live streams watching y'all, seeing what y'all got to say about the team in real time, and then of course, all the regular videos as well. They, they be on it, they really do. But they got an ear to the streets of exactly what y'all are saying. But anyway, this proves it right here, because Jeff Sribic said that Harbaugh said, you will probably see different guys at different spots along the offensive line on Sunday tell me that ain't what, what we've been asking for tell me that ain't what we, we've been asking for and we've been saying it so much so every single day every single week I know it's only been two weeks so far but still that's what we've been saying and Harbaugh's finally like you know what man let, let me give the people what they want let me give the people what they want so this is a possible good sign We'll see exactly who he deploys out there and which spot he deploys them at. But this is a, a good sign for the future. This is a good sign for John Harbaugh. Him willing to be like, you know what? I'm not going to be stubborn. Well, it depends on how he does his thing. It all depends on how he does it. But it's very important, like we've continued to say, like y'all already know, like the football world knows, you have to put the best five out there. You have to. It's, you got to do what's best for your football team. You got to do what's best for because if he puts the best five out there, it helps everybody out tremendously just like that. It helps the offensive line out. One helps Lamar Jackson out. It helps the running backs out. It helps the receivers out. It helps Todd Munkin out. It helps him out. It helps the defense. It literally helps everybody if you put the best five out there because it's a trickle down effect on the whole entire team.
Did we mention giveaway earlier? Yes, we certainly did. And this is being brought to you by Heart of the City Clothing. They're really trying to hook y'all up. They want to hook y'all up so bad that they are giving away two tickets. Not one, but two tickets to the Baltimore Ravens versus Cincinnati Bengals at M&T Bank Stadium. Thursday night football on November 7th. But how do you enter? How, how do you get those tickets? Well, for an entry, all you got to do, go to Heart of City Clothing. Hit up their website, which the link will be down below in the description. And I will have it as the pinned comment in this video. Go to their website, get you anything from the flock apparel, whether you want to get a revenge season uh, hoodie like this or anything else. Use code engraven 20 and you'll be entered to win. That's it. That's all you got to do. And you can do as many entries as you would like to. So if you do one purchase, you use code engraven 20 to get that 20% off. That gives you one entry into the contest. You want to do two different purchases, two different transactions. Use code engraven 20 for both of them. That gives you two entries into the contest in order to get these tickets to the Thursday night football game. Man, it's <laughs> I'm about to buy some stuff myself so I can enter into the contest. Because they ain't give me no tickets. They said they trying to take care of Team Keep It Clean. So they really love y'all. So make sure you enter ASAP. So Team Keep It Clean, we've come to my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you would ever like to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenfits. If not, it's A-OK. -okay. We got a very special, unique type of question for this one. This one came from Simon. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Let me know if I'm not. He said, hey, brother. Love your stuff. I'm still learning the game. Let me introduce myself. I am the father of Daniel Filele. So shout out to Daniel Filele's pops checking in. He said, I totally agree with the fans. He should be benched. Have to do what is right to win games. Now, see, that's, that's a, a, a father right there. Because if you like, because you know moms. Moms are a little bit different. They, 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 they could be a little soft on the kids and whatnot, soft on all kids and whatnot, but, but the father's, father's going to bring it. They go, look, son, I want you out there. I want you to be playing. I want you to have all the success in the world, but you got to tighten up, my friend. Well, actually, my son. Well, my son and my friend, because my son is my friend, but you get it. But anyway, he said, uh, I'm confused why he's still at right guard, though. Playing high school and college at right tackle is like ripping a fish out of water. You know what? That's something that we don't mention enough, that... With Daniel Fowler, and we've talked about it a lot, but I feel like recently we don't talk about it enough because we've, of course, been highlighting the struggles of Daniel Filele at right guard. But this goes something. This goes to something that we've been talking about on here a lot when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens playing people out of positions, and that's an issue. It's been an issue for a while. Sometimes it works out. Again, like you got your Pat Ricards, who was a defensive lineman turned fullback. Hey, it worked. Let's go. But there are a lot of cases where it just it hasn't and, and Filele he been a tackle this whole time and again we thought this offseason it was just they were just experimenting with some stuff but they kept it they kept it then he has been struggling and whatnot it, 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 not every single player been a show but he's been struggling uh but he's not playing his natural position so when you change positions especially on the offensive line that's a big like whoa that could be a shell shock but anyway continuing uh, he said, uh, I watched the Raiders game and was taken back uh, at his playing as if he was lost in space. So, yeah, so that that does make sense on why, why it has been a struggle for Daniel Filele. Now, of course, and I'm sure you didn't, but don't get it twisted. Just because people have been calling Daniel Filele out saying he has been struggling, it does not mean that people want to see Daniel Filele not succeed. Because we want to see him succeed. We want to see him do well. We want to see him do good. But it's very important for the Baltimore Ravens to put him in the best position possible for him to have success. Ooh, is Henry fool's gold? This next question came from David. He said, I typically don't send in questions because it usually seems like the flock all think alike, but I've noticed something that I haven't heard too many speak on. To start, I still believe in Justin Tucker from 50 plus. I don't care, I don't care. The goat is goaded and a couple of misses won't ungoat him. <laughs> There's certainly been more than a couple, but I get you and I respect the love that you got and we all got for Justin Tucker. Because again, don't get it twisted. When we talk about somebody struggling, when we talk about that we concerned for somebody in their struggles, it don't mean that the love ain't there. In, in my honest opinion, I think that you actually love somebody even more if you're willing to call out their struggles. You can't be just a, a, a yes man. Like if you're a real friend to somebody and they doing something that's downright stupid, like dumb, like think, what are you doing? It, it, are you okay? What's wrong with you? If you just sit there and you like, 
yeah, that's fine. You go ahead and keep doing that. That makes you a terrible friend. You got to keep it real with that person. You got to be honest with that person. Like, look, don't do that. That's not good. That's not wise. What are you doing? You got to be willing to have them uncomfortable conversations. Well, you should be comfortable having those uncomfortable conversations. Well, if you're comfortable having them, that wouldn't make them uncomfortable anymore. But anyway, continuing, he said, um, okay, moving on. Did we shoot ourselves in the foot all offseason? As fans, we are feeling every single loss from this offseason. We are. In my opinion, I don't know if signing Henry or letting Zeitler walk was the worst mistake. Oh, so he's saying, I don't know if signing Henry was the worst mistake or letting Zeitler walk was the worst mistake. Okay, here we go. He said, our main critique from the media was our offense was basic and one-dimensional. So what do we do? Go and get the most one-dimensional back in the game just to not even use them. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You, oof. Here we go. Um, he said, uh, Raven's going to Raven. He doesn't expand our playbook at all. I heard people talk all year. The Project Pat was a giveaway for the run. Well, with that logic, what is Derrick Henry? Right now, they're using him like he's on a pitch count. Uh, I think we should have targeted Kamara and kept Gus. And Kamara has vision, patience, speed, gets yards after the catch. He's running back that makes you respect the check down options. That's something that we talked about, too, on here. Like, that Kamara would be a perfect fit for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, because he's, he's somebody that, like you mentioned, he does everything and he does not make whatever you're doing obvious. Cause if he's in the backfield, it's like, all right, well, is Kamara could run, but all right, well, no, well, Kamara, he could catch too. So he, he could do it all. They'll have him in there on running and passing down. So he doesn't give it away with Derrick Henry, uh, with the Titans is the same thing. Same, same thing. He'll be in there on running downs, passing downs. 22. Come here. Come here real quick. And Ravens have been doing a lot of the same thing. They've been making things very, very obvious when it comes to Derrick Henry. Well, let me continue before I, I start going. He said, I've always felt the Ravens need a back that can catch and be useful on both passing and running plays. I love Justice Hill and have no complaints. But if I'm dealing, he's dealt. Zay plus Bateman. Yes, I said Bateman. Plus Mark Andrews. Plus Likely. Plus Kamara. Plus Lamar. Come on, it's poetry in motion. Lamar can audible from run to pass and vice versa without nullifying any threats. We instantly become very similar to the 49ers offense where everyone is dangerous and it would force teams to come into conflict with when and who to double. And while they're thinking about Lamar, takes it 60 yards and backflips into the end zone. Mm, that'd be nice. And I think that um, everything you're saying is right. I think it's very, very important that the Baltimore Ravens do use Derrick Henry the right way. They do use Derrick Henry correctly. They do use Derrick Henry in a way where it's not everything is not obvious. Everything's not a tail. So that's on, that's on the Baltimore Ravens. It really is. Now, I did like how they started last week having him out there in the passing game, having him out there uh, not just in running plays. And, and they actually passing the ball one time. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm talking about. Use him in different ways so when he's on the field, everything ain't so obvious. And I know I'm sure they want to – keep him for the uh like the long haul of the season. They want to keep him as fresh as they possibly can. So they hopefully – Use him and the other running backs in the playoffs, but it's to be the time. I mean, by the way, this season going so far, you got to get there first. Anyway, he said, secondly, if we move on from Hobbs, I think Vrabel would be perfect. Former player who played in coaches with grit, and most importantly, he knows who he is already. He knows the style of football he wants to impose on teams and is a defensive-minded coach. I love to bring that Dan Campbell, D'Amico Ryan type of vibe to the locker room. Oh, Mike Vrabel, that was that would certainly be something. That's not a name that I've heard mentioned so far. He said, okay, last quick point. Can we as fans ease up? I know we love our guys, but come on, we affect their play too. It's embarrassing to see uh, people amped up and just waiting to record themselves, bashing all, all, their own players uh, after having an off week or two. Uh, he, did, he did the same thing to Giro too. It's not the motivation some of us think it is, and it's definitely not the motivation that players need it to be. I know we are not used to the spotlight as the Patriots, Cowboys, Chiefs, etc. but when heads are hung low, we don't feed them dirt. We lift them up. Okay, I think that's all for now. Praying health and wealth over your fam and all the team. Keep it clean. Appreciate that very much, my friend. I do agree. I, I do agree. Um, we, and I know fan, fans are fans. We fans, people fan in different ways. Fan stands for fanatic. Fans can get a little crazy, but I, I think um, talking about a player's play, whether good or bad, in my opinion, that's okay. Saying a player's doing this well or a player's struggling with this, I think that's okay. But when it gets to disrespectful, that's when it's not okay. Stop 
panicking. Next question came from my guy Ernest. He said, wish everyone would stop panicking over starting 0 2. I don't know how we all ain't watching the same games. We losing because of refs and some bad plays, but I honestly think everyone is overdoing it. Listen, John Harbaugh is a good coach, man. Everyone relax. Ain't no one perfect. We make mistakes with everyone. Just calm down. We're going to be okay. Trust. For real, for real. Don't forget. So Ernest letting it be known like, look, we got to chill out. Now, I'm letting it be known like, look, uh, <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens, when they started seasons 0-2, 1999, missed the playoffs. 2002, missed the playoffs. 2005, missed the playoffs. 2015, missed the playoffs. 2024, Super Bowl. Next question came from T. John. He said, what's good, Ingram? Raven? I was watching a Jets game, and Rodgers may have the best offensive line in the league. Simpson and Moses were strictly business, I hope. Those dudes were good and when they were here. They actually protect Aaron Rodgers. They were solid. Um, Simpson, uh, Morgan Moses was solid. I know he was hurt, so that could have impacted his play last year. John Simpson, he was all right. He had his moments. He, he, he had his moments. Uh, I, he's playing a little different over there. But now they don't even have Morgan Moses, unfortunately, for the next couple of weeks, at least, because he suffered that injury uh, last night. So now that I believe they're going to be going, turning to their first round draft pick, rookie offensive lineman, I forget his name, my apologies, uh, but we'll see how that holds up. But I'm glad that Morgan Moses, and, and I know he's out for now, but and Jonathan Simpson, uh, they're doing good over there in New York.